Hank. That's right. Hank. If there's one guy on this, one person on this show that I didn't expect to get a major character development, it was freaking Hank. American Horror Story Coven episode review for the episode Head. And, uh, I don't know, man. In, in the in this world of you know takes and take backs again, where people just get powers and lose them just because, and there's reincarnation coming out of your ass. It's just uh, it's hard to tell if any of the major changes in this episode are gonna stick, but I think some of them at least are. So let's get started with the big focal point of the episode, which was actually Hank. Again, I, I did not see Hank getting this uh, <laughs> major character development here. It was unexpected, but it was cool. I really enjoyed it. You know, we had that episode towards the beginning of the season where, you know, he beds that redhead and then blows her brains out. That was his one cool moment. He's sort of been a bitch since that time. But uh, in this episode, he had some more great moments. The, the opening where he was hunting with his father and... <laughs> what they were hunting was witches, but he was unable to pull the trigger. Uh, that was that was pretty cool. It was neat father-son bonding moment over basically the hunting of another human being. It was a kind of a dark take on a father-son tradition there. I thought that was kind of neat. And we had another scene where Hank's uh, father, he's the head of this huge corporation and also the head of the witch hunters. And uh, I thought Hank was great in this scene, too, having to take some shit from his dad, basically being told that uh, he's kind of been really terrible at his witch hunting job. But this was a great scene for Hank. You could really get invested in him, just seeing, you know, what he's had to deal with throughout his life. And at the end, he goes on his hardcore shooting spree on the voodoo uh, beauty parlor barber shop at the end there. I kind of figured when he was loading up that he was going to go against them and that he was going to leave uh, the coven alone. And he took a bunch of them out before he got taken out in a very cool headshot scenario by Queenie. I thought that was pretty badass. So a couple of things I wanted to point out. I did like the scene at the end with Hank's dad just, you know, sobbing over the fact that his son was dead even though he he treated him like garbage earlier in the episode, and we can assume for the majority of Hank's life, but he really was upset when he died. So you can definitely expect to see some payback from that. I think that's going to be a pretty cool scenario, and I am looking forward to it. And what happened with Queenie? Yes, she shot herself in the head, but did that kill her? We just saw her kind of collapse at the end there. Don't know if she's really dead. Uh, we've seen, you know, her cut her own throat, but uh, taking a headshot, I don't know if that's going to be the same thing or not. Plus, she got shot in the gut uh, earlier on in the scene, so is that going to kill her? Is Was that her last episode? And as for Hank, you know, after seeing him sitting in a room full of guns for like three episodes straight where he's locking and loading or he's just surrounded by them... In this episode, where he's doing it one more time, we kind of lost its muster by now, and uh, it just it just didn't have the same impact as it did the first three freaking times they did it. And even though I did get some newfound investment in the character of Hank in this episode, he, in the end, he was still a witch hunter who was basically pretty fucking terrible at his job. I mean, just to blast into like a barber shop and go on this mad rampage doesn't take a whole hell of a lot of skill to be able to perform that operation. You just gotta be borderline whacked out of your mind. But in the end, I did feel some sympathy for his character. Certainly, a hell of a lot more than I did before this episode. Also on this episode, the show finally decided to clear up uh, that it wasn't Myrtle or Fiona that attacked Cordelia. It was another member of the Witch Hunters. I'm glad they finally decided to address that. And then you had Myrtle paralyzing and scooping out the eyeballs of those other two goofy members of the council. I thought that was a, a pretty cool scene, but um, at this point in the show, every time somebody dies or gets injured, I'm immediately second-guessing how, like, if it's going to stick or how long it's going to last because of how many take backs have happened so far this season. But I think these two, it's safe to say they're done because Myrtle was seen chopping them up, cutting them into pieces, 
uh, at one point in a pretty gory scene. So I think they're officially off the show. <laughs> but then we did we did get a take back of Cordelia getting her eyesight back and then just spontaneously losing those powers that she had for a couple of episodes. I don't know. Uh, it was cool how she got her eyes back, but it was still just another take back. It was interesting to see Cordelia step up a little bit, um, controlling her mother and Myrtle when they were bickering, trying to keep them focused on, on the common enemy, on what seems to be a common goal now. Uh, good to see her step into more of a leadership role. She's kind of been pretty terrible at that so far this season. Oh, and how's about neighbor boy Luke and his mom? Man, they're more jacked up than what I thought they were. So thanks to Nan being able to communicate with Luke while he was in a coma, which is a pretty neat little setup there, uh, we found out that uh, Luke's mom murdered her husband, and uh, now, according to Luke, well, God is out for her, man. God wants to punish her ass, <laughs> and she freaking needs it. Because at the very end, she suffocates Luke uh, basically to protect her own ass. She kills her son. So here you have Luke, the guy who's the master at taking these near-fatal blows, axe wounds, gunshots, and he gets done in by a freaking pillow. That's kind of a bummer. But if there's one death from this episode that uh, you're going to see get reversed, I think it's definitely going to be this one. I do not believe Luke is going to stay dead for very long. And then we had uh, the part that I'm just going to go ahead and say right now was my least favorite part of this episode. It was the Kathy Bates bodiless head comedy hour. And it was not very good. The jokes, the things she was saying, it was way too over the top. It seemed very... I, I was rolling my eyes at points. It was kind of ridiculous. And Queenie was making her watch Roots and the sequel to Roots. I mean, I get what they're trying to do. They want to reform her awful character. But her character was just so awful and did such terrible things. And I think by the end of the episode, uh, we're supposed to come away with the impression that now she is completely changed as far as her racism goes. She's had this change of, of heart, or at least of mind, because technically she doesn't have a heart attached to her head right now. But I, I still need to see more. I mean, maybe she's had that, that shift in the way she thinks, but I need to see her actually perform some actions that show... To, to try to make up for all of the terrible, horrible things that she's done in the past. And Kyle, some positive forward momentum for Kyle in this episode. He, well, after he accidentally kills Fiona's dog, uh, then she finds him, smartens him up, and uh, uh, finally the actor playing Kyle can get to do more this season besides just grunt and groan. Fiona has at least positioned him to be like the protector of the witches now which I think is a pretty cool setup and could lead to some interesting scenes uh, later on in the show. So what I liked least in this episode, I already said it was Kathy Bates, just her head, it looked over the top, and the things she was saying just being used as this ridiculous comedy relief, um, it really didn't fit in and was kind of uh, eye-rolling. My favorite part of the episode was uh, the two scenes between Hank and his father. The first, the opening when he was a kid, that hunting scene I thought was was very cool, very good character moment for Hank. And then again, same thing, uh, present day with his father uh, in that corporation really did a lot for Hank's character. And it was just cool to see those kind of great moments on, those great character moments on the show this season. Because so far, I mean, there just there hasn't been that many. So it was nice to see that the show uh, can can pull it off this season, and I'm hoping for more of that kind of stuff as as the show progresses. And overall, I'm going to go ahead and give this episode a B-. I am very happy to see the show come back from how bad it was last week, because last week just was not a good episode. But uh, it definitely seems like there's a change in direction with some secondary players officially dying off, I think, permanently. And we even get to see a new enemy emerging. So uh, it definitely seems like the creators of the show are sticking behind these changes. Yes, they are moving in this direction. Hopefully they really do stick behind what they've done. And we can see where they go from here when the show comes back uh, the week of January 8th. And uh, that's it, JB Squared, 61279. And I will see you guys then.